Hi guys, welcome to the 28th video of the Love Bubber 450 question series. And this is the third video of the topic searching and sorting. So if you have not watched the previous videos, we have finished arrays, matrix and strings. So please go and watch that. I'll put the playlist link in the description and also you can find the question, the sheet link, the question sheet link and also whatever problems I'm discussing, all the solutions you can find it over there. So actually today we have to solve these two problems, but this problem, it requires a more better understanding for myself to explain. So from my side only, I need to put more effort in order to explain to you, although I have solved the problem. And this problem is uh, totally new for me. So I will solve it and I need one more day time. And minimum heights problem will be coming out tomorrow for sure. Please don't be angry because I had a presentation today in college, so I was unable to uh, record it. I will record it and upload it tomorrow for sure. Okay. So let us solve two problems today. The two problems will be given an unsorted array and some number. Okay. And we have to find if there is a pair of elements whose difference is equal to the given number. So it is a pretty straightforward problem, right? I don't think there is any other explanation required. So for what is the question saying? Question is saying if the numbers are suppose two, three, six, eight, and you have to say if there is a pair whose difference is five, then yes, you can see that eight, eight minus three is five. So there is a pair. So you have to just output one or minus one. So to do this problem, you will have two approaches. So approach number one, approach number two. In approach number one, you will have time complexity O of n, but space complexity O of n. And in approach number two, it will be having time complexity uh, n log n and space complexity of O of one. So this is time complexity and this is space complexity, okay? So this first method involves hashing. This first method involves hashing. Second method involves sorting. Second method is much more this thing. Uh, you know, it is smarter method, but because time complexity is n log n, sometimes you might not use it. So in coding around and all, you can use hashing. But generally what I've heard is in interviews, in the technical interview, people don't like hashing. They don't want you to do that hash map and all. They do not want you to use map. But if you get this question in the coding round and you want to use map, how will you use hash map? So if you have to use a hash map, what you should do? You should just check for two things. You should check if A of I plus K is present in the map or A of I minus K is present in the map. So if these two things are present in the map, so store all the elements in the map, okay? And then check if these two elements, any one of them is present, then just output one. Otherwise output minus one. So hash map solution, I think everybody can do it. It's not a big thing, but how to approach this problem using sorting? So using sorting, what we should do is, so obviously we should first sort the array. So for now I am just using the STL function, but I would uh, recommend you to learn merge sort because it will be asked in the interview most of the time. So learn merge sort, but to save your time, use STL only, STL sorting. So this is the first step. The first step is to sort the array. Second step is take two indices, L is zero and R is equal to one. It becomes a two pointer kind of problem. It becomes a two pointer kind of problem. Let me show you the code. So the code that I have written over here is, I will show it here. So first of all, take the input, okay? Take the input array. And let us say we have to find a pair whose difference is K. K will be given, sort the array. So this is step one, sorting is the step one. Let us keep a bool value okay. That is if we don't have an answer, if we have an answer. Initially, let it be false. 
If OK is false, that means we don't have an answer. Otherwise, it is having an answer. Now let us do the two pointer method. It, let us say L is equal to zero, R is equal to one. So two indexes, indices, one is pointing uh, just after the other one. We will just say if L is less than N and R is less than N, we will now check for the conditions. If A of R minus A of L is equal to K, and most importantly, L is not equal to R. That means we have found a pair, we will say OK is true and we will break out. Otherwise, if A of R minus A of L is less than K, then we will move R. Otherwise, we will move L. So this two-pointer problem, let me explain it with an example. So the example that I had taken, so the example that I had taken was what? I had taken two, three, six, eight, and our K is equal to five. So initially, L is equal to zero and R is equal to one. So L is over here and R is over here. Now what is A of R minus A of L? It is equal to one. Now compare with K, one is less than K. So what we should do when one is less than, when this value is less than K, we will move our R. So R will go over here now. So now see six minus two is less than K. So we will move our R. So R will be here now. So R was one, it became two, now it is three. So now eight minus, see eight minus two, eight minus two is six, it is greater than five. So now we will move L. So L will come over here. So this is my L, this is my R. So eight minus three is equal to five. So we got the answer. So this is how you can use the two pointer sorting method. So I hope you got the code. You can have a look at it once again. It is very simple, intuitive problem sorting, but the time complexity will be N login. So please have a look at the code and uh, anyway, it will be in the description box only to not to worry much. I'll put it there. Okay. So let us go to next problem. Next problem is we are given an array of integers and we have to find the majority element. Now majority element is an element which appears more than N by two times in an array. So, for example, if the array is three, one, three, three, two, then majority element is three. To solve this problem, okay, to solve this problem, actually you have, uh, one second. See, to solve this problem, right, to solve this problem, there are six methods. There are six methods. So some of them involve binary search, some of them involve hashing. And there is one solution. There is one kind of a solution, which is the best. I felt it is the best because that one solution is having is having time complexity O of N, space complexity O of one. It is based on randomization. It means that if there are N elements and there is a majority element, that means that element will occur more than N by two times. So this randomization method is a method which says there is a possibility of finding the majority element just by uh, keeping a variable count and counting how many of such occurrences are there. If you still don't understand what I said, you can go to lead code in the submission, this thing, the solution is there. They have explained this randomization method very well. You can use sorting, hashing, whatever you want, but time complexity, 
and space complexity you will not get o of n and o of 1 only with randomization you will get o of n and o of 1 so let me show you what is this randomization i will remove this code this see this is the earlier code i had written earlier code i had written using hashing but let us not use hashing let us simply say that there is an answer variable initially it is equal to 0 and there is a count variable which is initially 0 now let us traverse through the array okay let us traverse through the array and we will say if <clears throat> count is equal to 0 our answer is equal to a of i if our answer is equal to a of i then we will do count plus plus else we will do count minus minus i don't know the mathematical proof for this i don't know how else to explain it to you but this randomization method is the best method this is one of the only ways to do this problem in o of n time and o of one space complexity now i simply have to return answer so let us see if we get correct or we messed up somewhere let us see so we got wrong answer and it's saying its correct output is minus 1 so here it is saying majority element okay so you can output minus 1 also so what was missing in the code was when we were getting our answer, we need to verify if it is majority element or not. So to verify that, I just made a bool function is majority and I passed the answer that we got and I'm checking if that answer is our majority. That is, I'm counting how many such elements are there. If count is greater than n by 2, I will return 1. Otherwise, I'll return 0. So if it is a majority element, I'll return answer. Otherwise, I'll return minus 1. So this was missing in the code which I have added and I will put the solution in the description. This is actually based on randomization method. If you really want to study deep into it, check the lead code uh, problem. Just type majority element lead code, you will get the solution, okay? So thank you for watching. Please do uh, like, share the video with all your friends and subscribe to the channel. You have given a lot of support till now. Please continue to do so. I'm really thankful for all of you and uh, let us meet in another video and i'm going to put that minimum heights video don't be angry and i'll put it okay so thank you for watching bye take care